What's up everybody, I'm Liam Clisham and welcome to another awesome Redshift tutorial. This week, I'm gonna talk to you about how to recreate that sweet, sweet bloom that you get out of Octane. So if you've been jonesing for that as a convert into Redshift, or if you've been using Redshift for a while and you just really want that post-effect bloom, this is how you do it. We're gonna render out about four AOVs, bring them into After Effects, and really crank up that emissions light and make a nice bloom. So let's hop into Cinema 4D and get started. So now that we're inside Cinema 4D, I'm just gonna get technical for a minute and break down my render settings and some camera settings, and then I'll show you how to split out the AOV and really start to composite this. So inside our render settings, under basic, we have just a minimum of 32 and a max of 256. Because the scene's so sim uh, simple, you could probably just rein this into like 64 or 128. Uh, it probably doesn't need to be that high. I just wanted to make it as clean as possible. Then under GI, I've got four bounces. I've only got 128 rays going. And then just our point cloud down here. You can probably set this to whatever you want. These are just the settings I like. And then um, under integration, just make sure your default light's turned off. And so that's about it. I'll talk about the AOV settings in just a minute. So under camera, I've got our camera tag here. I have done something to the tone mapping. So let me just reset this to default, and I'm gonna let this play out again. So if you notice, we've got these okay lit lights on this object here. But what this allow overexposure does is allows what it says, overexposure, which is kinda how you get blooms. Um, we're gonna end up compositing this photo in After Effects, but if you wanna see it look dev-wise, you can crank this up, and it only goes up to one, I wish it went further, but crank it up, and you'll see these lights get a little bit brighter. They kinda have a little bit more GI bleed around them, and then if you really want to mess with it, you could throw a bouquet image in there and start to get a little bit of like chromatic abrasion and get that bloom shift that you get inside of Octane. Um, so what is bloom? Well, bloom is actually a few different post settings. That's why in Octane, it's under the post settings. Uh, it's made up of like a Gaussian blur and some level adjustments to bring out the highlights and things like that. But it's mostly just on the emissions layer of an object or if you have lights in the scene or things like that. It just focuses on that pass and then pushes a blur onto it, pushes the highlights, um, brings down the the lower tones so it really has a nice contrast and so that's what we're gonna do on our own and really you get a lot more control that way by just doing multi-pass and handling it yourself so the way we set that up is inside our shader graph you'll see how this is broken down we have just our base and our ambient occlusion some roughness and metallic in here a normal map and then this beacon which is an emissive layer so if i disconnect that let it refresh, you'll see that the lights go away. So this is where we're gonna be getting our light source from. I'll reconnect that. So when you think of bloom and lights, you wanna think of emissive. So under our render settings, we're gonna go ahead and start turning on some AOV settings. So it will be disabled by default. You wanna enable that when you come in here. And I already have some set up. You don't have to do all these if you don't want to. I like getting the control out of it though. So I've got reflections, diffuse lighting, global illumination, and then emission, just like emission down here. And the way you turn that on is you just set how many number of AOVs that you want, and you'll come in and you'll select whatever you want. And under all of these, whichever ones you wanna output, you wanna make sure that you have your multi-pass output turned on and then file output turned on as well. Um, when you turn on multi-pass output, it only puts it to the render view, it won't actually output. So make sure you're turning on your file output. Then over here, you wanna have your uh, multi-pass turned on. Post effects, uh, you don't necessarily have to turn it on. I like having it turned on, it just seems to always get all the passes that way. 
And then under save, you'll have your regular image that you save out. Make sure you have an alpha channel. It doesn't matter if it's a straight alpha or not. Um, and all these other settings for multipass down here, you just either want to have it deep saved as one file. I personally like to have it as individual files. So one for emission, one for GI, et cetera, et cetera. Honestly, if you're at this point where you're starting to work with AOVs, you'll probably know what settings you like best. So let's go back into our viewport and under this tab here, this drop down, you'll see that we have diffuse lighting now, emission, GI, reflections. So if I do diffuse, you'll see we just get this base model here. If I do emission, we just get the lighting. This is where we're really gonna push this inside After Effects. Down here under GI, we get a little bit of global illumination spill over on here. And then reflections, we get our specular reflection hits there. And then our beauty pass. So I'm gonna go ahead and render this out and then we're gonna jump inside After Effects and start to composite this all together. All right, so inside After Effects, you'll see that I've got all these passes here. Um, really, I don't need any of these labeled number two. It's just because I rendered it out twice and it started replacing things and then also renumbering things. So um, you'll probably just get a base output, a diffuse, an emission, a GI, and reflections. You shouldn't be getting all these extras, but if you do, um, really it's all these same passes. And then RGB is actually just a beauty pass. It's the same as this here. Uh, sometimes it's labeled RGBA or RGB, or sometimes it's labeled beauty pass. As custom AOVs roll out over the next few weeks, um, you can start labeling them whatever you want. But uh, just know this is a beauty pass. So how are we gonna composite this? Well, I've already dragged in this file here and started a new comp. And you'll see that it's just what we got in our render view. Same thing here. And you know, we can start working with this now, but you're not gonna get the effect that you want. So I like starting with diffuse and bringing this in as our base layer and just turning this off, kind of having this as a reference. Um, you can also leave it on and then solo it as you work on things to see if you're getting close to the beauty. And next, I'm gonna bring in our reflections and you'll see it's all black and weird looking. And that's because we have to start compositing it and adding things together. So for the reflections, I'm gonna go in and change it to add. And you'll see now, we start to get a little bit closer. This is where we started. And we get those highlights in there from the reflections. So we're starting to add in those details. If we bring in GI, we're gonna do the same thing. So we get these like weird GI lighting things there that don't seem normal, but as soon as we switch it to add, it's gonna be the fall off from our emissive lights in there and then down in here. And then on top will be our emission and we're gonna add that as well. And you can mess around with different settings. So uh, for GI, maybe you wanna set it to screen instead, or you can set it to like pin light and you'll get a different effect. Obviously, if you do that, you need to start bringing in your alphas and things like that and making sure uh, you're masking stuff out. Add just is nice, quick, and easy, and it usually always works. So under emission, if I go into effect controls, we're gonna start changing stuff around. So if you remember what I said, a bloom is mostly like a Gaussian blur or like a couple directional blurs, changing some levels, um, just kind of tweaking this emission layer. So I'm gonna start with levels just to show you what I mean. So if we bring this in here and start adjusting our gamma, you'll see it starts to get blown out there. If I bring it this way, you get really saturated. You can kind of play with it and get it wherever you want. You can clamp it if you want to and just find that perfect spot that you want. I'm first going to start with blurring it out though. That was just to show you how easy it is to start making adjustments. So. We can start with a Gaussian blur. Like I said, a lot of times it's just a Gaussian blur with some added effects. And as I add this in, there you go. You start to get that bloom look. But if you go too far, it kind of gets a little bit like squarish in spots. Um, so I like to just leave this probably around like 10 or 15. Let's do 10 and bring in a directional blur. That gives you a lot more control. And I kind of like an anamorphic look. So I'm going to 
add this blur length vertically right here. And now we kind of have this anamorphic bloom going on. I can uh, duplicate that and we'll name this one vert. And this one will be H blur. And let's turn this 90 degrees. So we're going horizontal and you'll see it spreads out that way a bit more. I don't need it that much, especially since we already have a Gaussian blur on there, but let's say maybe tw we'll do 15, just a little bit from side to side. And then we can start messing with our levels. Or you can use curves too if you want. Um, depending on the day, I kind of switch back and forth. So I think let's start with just doing our gamma. So we get these bright highlights in there. Maybe I can clamp this down and bring this in a bit more. I think I'm clamping that a little too much in there. So that's okay. I could adjust my blur a little bit more. Maybe I need some more length on there. And maybe bring that back in a little bit. So, you know, that's starting to look okay. Might want to play with it a little bit more. Um, so that's the start of it. But then if you really want to start getting crazy, you can start doing things like RGB splits for a chromatic abrasion, or if you have any uh, of the Red Giant trap code suite, maybe throw in a star glow. How crazy do you guys want to get? Maybe. Maybe we'll do a star glow. So let's go ahead and bring this in. Where is star glow? There it is. So for star glow, it needs to be at the top. I'm gonna throw it in there. I'm gonna turn all these off. Oh yeah, so that's looking pretty Christmassy. Uh, we can go in and change our colors. So I'm gonna change this color map to, see what spirit is. That's a little too purple for my liking. That's pinks. How about Mars? All right, that's looking all right. Streak length, we can just go crazy with that if we want. Uh, we might need to adjust our pre-process. The threshold's probably a little too high. So we're losing some of our streak detail. And we can boost our light up a bit. Get crazy. There we go. Maybe add some shimmer in there, make it shiny. Oh yeah some more detail and you can change this I'm going to change it to add and then we can start to add in some of our Gaussian blur again and our vertical blurs now it's just getting all funky and crazy and because I've clamped it we're losing a lot of that detail that we had before so I can bring this range back in and kind of just control the gamma oh yeah that's some bloom there. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring this back down a little bit, but you can get really crazy with it. And the nice thing is, is you're only affecting just this emissions layer. So say you want it to look this crazy with crazy smear star glow lights. You can go into your GI, throw some levels in here. I'm gonna do a curve on this one. Like I said, depending on what my mood is, I'm gonna switch it up. So, GI, I want to push push those bounds a little bit so we get some more fall off on here. Reflections, do some curves in here. Let's see, bring that down a bit, bring this up in the highlights. Maybe we need to bring it out of our shadows a little bit more. Yeah, there, you can see it coming out in those areas. Getting a little crazy down here. We can throw in another curves. So we'll adjust our overall lighting. Getting a little too dark, but maybe like right in there. Bring out our highlights a bit more. Maybe something like that. Kind of clamp it there. Uh, it's getting too crazy. 
There we go. So this is way more extreme than the promo photo that I sent out. But um, you get the point. You can start controlling things way more. So, you know, like the fall off of our GI is really hot now. And we weren't really getting that with just our beauty shot there. Got a lot more contrast in there. You're getting a little bit more grit in these areas here. Um, you can just really push the limits of what you're doing. And even up in here, now that we've really adjusted the levels, you can see like this beacon light is really happening right from this spot. And then we get the details brought in that are holding in that beacon. Um, just a lot of fun stuff you can do. Maybe it's getting a little bit too blown out here. It doesn't look like there's actually a light sitting in there anymore. Um, so, you know, you just play with it and have a good time. So that's it for this week. Pretty simple stuff once you understand what passes you're rendering out and what they're doing, and then bring them into After Effects or Photoshop, Nuke or Fusion, or whatever compositing software you're using. If you have any questions, definitely subscribe and leave a comment below, or follow any of the social media links to any of the resources that we provide, and you can ask questions there too. All right, guys, thanks so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Brograph.com, an online resource for learning Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other motion graphics tools specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Brograph motion graphics tutorial. With tutorials, plugins, and now a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners worldwide. Yeah, it's a great community to be part of. We give you professional time-saving tips, industry news, interviews, shortcuts, and lessons that help keep you current in the world of motion design. Throw in HDR Studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put in a reflection, and gorgeous. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Our weekly long-form podcast will give you the latest news, help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. Learn about the latest render engines, modeling techniques, and workflow integration while staying entertained. Real nice banana. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> Our BroGraph talks are a chance to see the way industry leaders from around the globe are changing the face of motion design. Sometimes you got to make stuff that you're not going to put on your reel. And I'm not here to judge. The podcasts and talks include people like People, Barton Damer, Nick Campbell, Andrew Kramer, David Ariev, Chad Ashley, Paul Babb, EJ Hassenfrost, Mitch Myers, Chris Schmidt, Jules Urbach, Cornelius Dammert, David Brodeur, Andy Needham, Caitlin Kaju, Zubair Parker, Noseman, Ryan Bean, Casey Hupke, Nick Lyons, Sage, Joey Corinman, Jeremy Cox, Rick Barrett, John Dickinson, Matthias Omatola, Patrick Gosky, Brandon Clements, Steve Teeple, Tom Glimpse, Patrick Longstrom, Julia Simone, Devin Coe, Al Heck, and even Dead Mouse. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? Our BroGraph breakdowns go behind the projects and give you an insight on what it's like to manage and maintain your own personal business or work for a large company. Join us for live sessions, check out our useful plugins, watch time-lapse projects, interact with us, and send us email questions and topic ideas. Or just hit the rando render button and do an imaginative daily that'll keep you on your toes. Take all your dreams and let's do it! Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials. Pretty good, I guess.